Evolutionary.org, episode 590. Today we're talking about I'm young with low testosterone levels. TRT? Should I go TRT? And this is a really, really good topic, Mobster. Um, listen, a lot of our listeners, a big chunk, are in their late teens, 20s, 30s. As you get older, our demographics kind of get low, but we're kind of like our demographics are anyway are from 18 years old up to 65 years old. So, but a big chunk of our demographics are you guys in your 20s and 30s. We also have people in their 40s and 50s, of course, mobsters age. But listen, a lot of you have questions about this and they're legitimate questions and you're going to get a lot of information out there. And a lot of it is not in your best interest. A lot of it is just not incorrect, is incorrect information. A lot of it is bro science. And, you know, a lot of the people pushing this they have a financial incentive for pushing you one way or the other. A lot of the people pushing this are old school. They probably got their information from some magazine out of the 80s. They haven't updated their information. So we're going to separate the fact and fiction. Mobster and I are going to go over this. So Mobster and I both, you know, we, um, you know, we've been using anabolic steroids, cycling them off and on for years, but neither one of us are on TRT. Now, at some point, we will go on TRT. We don't know when. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. have a plan. When it, when it's time, it's time. So Me neither. Me neither, Steve. Yeah. So really, the first point I want to make before I bring you in, Lobster, for your you know points, and we make points before these podcasts, so we're going to try to get to all these points. But my first point is, look, you want to keep TRT away until it's absolutely necessary. So yes. if your body's producing hormones it's like having a money tree in your backyard you go in the backyard every day that you've got money you pick the money tree you keep the tree healthy you feed the tree you fertilize the tree you give it water you give it sun you take care of the tree you don't spray it with pesticides you don't give you know you, you don't burn uh, pieces of the limbs off you don't damage the tree you don't hurt the trunk it's the same thing you don't hurt the roots you make sure the tree can flourish. This way, every day you can go in the backyard and pick the money off the tree. It's the same thing with your HPTA, your pituitary glands, your latex cells. These are functioning just like that tree, and you want to keep it flourishing. So if you want to keep it flourishing long term, what do we know? We know that chemicals, we know eating organic is good. Keep away the chemicals. Stay away from the pesticides and the, and the herbicides and the Clorox and all these toxic chemicals. Literally, we, we know from studies, Mobster, literally swimming in a pool every day, a chlorinated pool, will lower your testosterone levels. Isn't that crazy? So if you have a chlorinated pool, switch it to a saltwater pool. I'm not saying don't have a pool, but switch it to a saltwater pool or make it where you're using better um, cleaning methods where you're not actually swimming in chlorine. Um, I know when I swim in a chlorinated pool, I get a sore throat because I'm allergic to chlorine. So if you're allergic to something and you keep giving it to your body, of course, it's going to lower your testosterone levels. Um, you know, so it's about eating healthy, exercising, taking care of yourself. And that's how you're going to keep your testosterone levels strong. Now, a lot of you grew up, maybe you weren't fed a good diet and you were exposed to a lot of chemicals. Maybe you grew up near a coal plant somewhere in the Appalachians, all right? Um, we know that in certain states near that, you know, coal states like West Virginia, for example, people have less to lower testosterone levels. Kentucky, Tennessee, those states, they have lower testosterone levels than other parts of the country. Why? Because they're exposed to the pollution, the, the, the polluted rivers, the polluted air, you know, so. It's about, sometimes it's out of your control. So in those situations, you may want to consider TRT. That's always, but what you can control is what you can control. So you want to make sure that you're doing what you need to do to keep your TRT healthy. Another area, which a lot of young guys will screw up, is they'll use anabolic steroids too young. And when you use anabolic steroids too young, your HBTA starts getting out of whack. And your HBTA ends up your pituitary glands aren't producing the hormones, which aren't stimulating latex cells the way they should. So your testosterone levels start dropping at a much earlier age, or your testosterone levels will start leveling off at a very early age. So when you use anabolic steroids when you're young, you kind of turn that spigot off, and your body 
forgets how to produce its own testosterone. So we know guys who use steroids in their late teens, once they get into their mid twenties, usually their, their HPTA has some sort of damage. And it's just like having a car motor and revving up the motor. Um, they always say when you first get a car, I don't even know if it's true. I don't know anything about cars. So you guys can make the comment, but I'm just giving you an example. They always say when you get a new car, don't drive long distances. Don't rev up the engine too much because you'll damage it long term. Or if you have an electric car, don't charge your battery to 100%. You should only charge it to 80% because you'll degrade the battery. It's the same thing. So um, your cell phone, never keep your cell phone charged all night if it's charged because you'll degrade the battery. So it's the same thing with your HBTA. You're going to degrade your HBTA and you'll need to go on TRT in your late 20s instead of being like Mobster and I who waited till we were older to use anabolic steroids. And our HBTAs are still healthy. So we're going to get into some more strategies too to using anabolic So I'll use one more before I bring you in, Mobster. Sorry to rant because if I don't say this, it ties into what I just said is cycle your steroids properly. So yes. don't run a cycle longer than 10 or 12 weeks. Because if you do that, you'll burn out your HPTA. Another thing is if you run a cycle, then you run your PCT, then you need to take time off in between. So I always say if you're on for 10 weeks, you need to come off for 20 weeks, twice as long as you were on. This ensures that your HPTA has time to come back. Because what a lot, a lot of people do, they make this mistake. They'll run a 12-week uh, cycle, four-week PCT, take like two weeks off and jump back on steroids. Well, that's not enough time. Your pituitary glands never rebounded fully to where – so you're basically – it's rebounding only 50%, and then you're going back on and shutting it back down. So now your pituitary glands get damaged. They forget how to, how to be at 100% capacity. Now they're only running at 50% capacity. Then you do it again. You run another 10-week cycle, four-week four PCT, and then take a couple weeks off and then go back on steroids again. And now you're only bouncing 50% from there. So now suddenly you get your testosterone levels checked. And then you're like, oh my God, Steve, I'm only producing 250 nanograms per deciliter. That's my blood work. Where it should be 600 or 700. Why am I only at 250? <laughs> because you degraded your pituitary glands. Yeah. By yeah. not giving your pituitary glands enough time in between cycles to fully come back. So that's a little, very, very important tip for you younger guys in your 20s who are using steroids. And even for you guys in your 30s and 40s who use steroids. That's, you've got to give your body a chance to fully recover before you go back on. So I'm also going to bring you in for your uh, your points. Go ahead. Yeah, let, let me have, I'm going to come at this for two angles, Steve, and we can discuss both angles, right? So number one, would be medical, uh, undescended testicles, perhaps, you know, uh, someone kicked you in the balls when you were playing football when you were seven and they've never sort of fully recovered or whatever else, right? So there might be a medical reason. And that can include, as Steve said, it can include the pollution chemical situation that just, just Steve just discussed. It can be that you're majorly obese, okay? And in which case, you know, you come onto the forum, you neglect to mention that you're majorly obese, and you say, oh, my, my testosterone's not that high, and I'm only this age, 18, 19, 21, 22 years of age, not mentioning your body mass index, and we assume that you're an, a normal average person and say, oh, we can do X, Y, and Z. But in reality, literally just getting leaner and in shape will improve your testosterone levels, all things being equal. If, for example, uh, your lifestyle is horrendous, and I mean, for example, Steve, recreational drugs, I believe there's some evidence to support uh, over abuse of um, cannabis uh, as, as a way of lowering your testosterone. Uh, if you're doing other recreational drugs, if you don't eat properly or cleanly or organically, like Steve said, these are things you can fix. These are things you can manipulate. Do not be too keen to add yet another chemical in the form of steroids into the mix, even at TRT levels, because you are not willing to compensate with the other things. So that's that's an obvious one there, Steve. Make sure that you identify those particular issues and habits and fix them. You have that control. It isn't just a simple case of going on the internet, listening to this podcast, and taking TRT. Right? You have things you can do. And not only that, at some point, if you use steroids and or have to go on TRT, it will be better 
for you in terms of your response to the steroids or your response to TRT if you're healthy, if you are not obese and so on and so forth. So you will feel better. Your levels will be higher again just from fixing those other issues. But let's let's go with the the habits I have seen and discussed with Steve off air and on the forums, and I've posted on this multiple times, okay? So one of the issues, Steve, is that younger guys are influenced to a, a, a greater or lesser degree by what they see online. And what do I mean by that? So, for example, we just discussed the other day an uh, Instagram influencer. Who, the begin, His first name is Sam, and Sam is young. And him and, for example, someone else, uh, a pair of twins who, who euphemistically use a name of a steroid to identify themselves are also young. Now, two or three individuals out of the five, six, seven, eight billion people on the planet is not that big of a deal. The issue is the influence that they have on younger people. So if you're 18, 90, 20, 21, 22, or even up to 25 years of age, and you follow these individuals and others like them, on Instagram, on other forms of social media, there might be uh, an argument to be made that you're being influenced by people that are too young. One or two people are making a choice. is no big deal. It's the thousands of people following them making the same choice that becomes a problem. So, for example, we have a, 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 num a kind of undefined reason for having the number 25 in our minds. And it's literally down to, really, Steve, uh, mental maturity and, and as much as possible, physical maturity we know that people vary in that particular place but again if you're 18 or 19 years of age with a perfectly working uh, testosterone in your body your hip is working fine and you're influenced by someone on social media to go on steroids and worse steve to then blast and cruise or as steve said do normal cycles but have barely enough time off in between to recover you don't understand or you don't care to understand that you are damaging your ability to recover, and at some point, it's going to make a huge difference. So, for example, Steve, and I'll, I'll tell this story very quickly because we've seen this multiple times. I've been doing stuff like this with Steve on the podcast, but specifically looking and passing comments on very similar situations for probably 20 years. And so I'm thinking back in the days when Muscle Talk uk was around and available as a form. It was the biggest one in the UK at the time, Steve. And we had examples then. Guys that were doing drugs, I'm thinking specifically of cocaine, but also one or two individuals that had decided quite specifically at the wrong age that they were going to stay on steroids forever. And how many times, Steve, did we see the, the, the I'm very determined, I'm going to use steroids, you guys can't stop me, X, Y, and Z. And then literally five, six, seven years later, the same people will come back and realize they'd made a mistake. They ignored the advice that they were given. And the number one issue was fertility. They literally, I've said this before, Steve, they couldn't have a child in the normal way. They ended up having to do IVF, uh, in, in vitro fertility treatment, uh, which is uncomfortable for the, for the lady and very emotionally disturbing for both parties, male and females. So, the decision-making process changes and the younger guys couldn't get their head around that. So you've got that particular one, Steve. I'm thinking also um, if there was a chemical, biological, whatever reason, is it becoming more and more of an issue with younger people in and of itself? Or is it literally because we are PED-focused and we see that kind of stuff on the forum that the guys that are PED-focused and self are coming to us for that kind of information? So back to you for a second. When it comes to, you know, testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, look, at the end of the day, this is what I recommend. Everybody should be getting blood work done. So get your blood work done, see where you're at. But here's a problem I'm seeing, Mobster, with a lot of young guys. We see you guys on the forum like this. And what happens is you run your blood work at a really young age and you start panicking. Like, oh, my God, my bloods are only 500. They're only 600. They should be, you know, close to 1,000, yada, yada, yada. So everybody has different genetics. Everybody has a different childhood, okay? It doesn't mean just because your blood work might be four or 500 that that's not a good number. Because not everybody is born to have testosterone levels that are, you know, at 1,000, okay? So another thing, too, your body develops differently, 
And some people, you're not going to peak your testosterone levels till well into your 20s. Other people will, will peak testosterone levels in their late teens. It just depends. And your testosterone levels are constantly changing, especially when you're in your teens and early 20s. They're going up, they're going down throughout the day. You can get blood work done at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and it's going to be a different number than they are at 10 or 11 a.m. So it's very important not to panic because you're stressing yourself out. You're putting yourself in the panic. And then now you're like, okay, now I'm going to go on TRT. Well, you don't need TRT. You just need to calm down and stop going crazy over your blood work. I didn't even get my testosterone levels checked till I was in my late 20s. I was like 28 or 29 the first thing I got my testosterone levels checked. So I didn't use anabolic steroids before then. That's why I got them checked. But if you're going to use anabolic steroids, then yeah, you need to check them. But more importantly, if you're going to check them, don't panic. Don't go into panic mode. Because like I said, it's not about my testosterone levels are at 400 or my testosterone levels are at 800. It's not about where your testosterone levels are at. Just because you have high testosterone levels or low testosterone levels, it's not going to affect you the way you think. A lot of people think, well, if I have high testosterone levels, that means I can walk into the gym, pick up a weight, and I'm going to grow muscle like magic. It doesn't work like that. I know plenty of guys who are older than mobster who are on TRT and they look like shit. They're just obese. They don't have a speck of muscle on them. So just because you're on TRT and you get your testosterone levels over a thousand, that doesn't make mean mean anything. You know, I take the guy with 400 testosterone levels who works out, eats good, and is smart and good gets sleep over a guy who's on TRT who has a thousand levels, who doesn't do anything to sit on their ass and eat potato chips all day. You see. So it's not about your testosterone levels. It's a part of it, but it's not 100%. So don't stress out over it. That's a mistake we see. And then guys come on the forum and they're in a panic. Like, oh, I need to go on TRT. I'm only 21 years old. Well, my my, my, TRT, my, TRT, my my testosterone levels are only at 500. I'm like, no, that's not a reason to go on TRT, man. You're, you're fine. Just chill, relax. You're stressing yourself out. That's why your levels are at 500. If you just calm down, your levels would, would go up a little bit from there and you'd be perfectly fine. So it's that's a mistake that a lot of people make it as well. Go ahead, Mopsy. Yeah, I mean, here you go, Steve. I, I've actually used this analogy myself, exactly what you just said, right? So it's not that easy to get blood tests in the UK. Uh, my doctor wouldn't do it if I asked him for no particular reason. Uh, can I have it done to see what my testosterone levels are? No, it costs you know, just money. So I'd have to have it done privately. So there, there are some prim prick tests, et cetera. So I've never had it done. I should have it done and would highly recommend you get it done to listeners before, during and after a cycle, just to see where you are and, and to see how the cycle's working and so on and so forth. That's the best possible protocol. However, I assume, Steve, that I do not have high, by like 1,000 nanograms, like Steve said, TRC levels. I'm not particularly hairy. I don't, don't sprout facial hair. I don't have to shave twice a day. Uh, don't exhibit some of the other signs of high natural testosterone levels. So you go, okay, what about affinity? And that's something I've used before. As Steve said, if I take, let's say that my levels are average, right in the middle, five, 600, Steve, um, what is it about me? And for that matter, Steve himself, bearing in mind, neither of us are on TRT, that's allowed us to hit a certain particular level. For example, we're both very, very close in, in excess of 400 pounds on the bench press, which is quite rare in gyms, to say the least. Steve maintains a level of muscular physique year-round. I'm a big motherfucker who's just does crazy shit in the gym, and yet I'm not on TRT. I don't blast and cruise, so when I do a cycle, I come off and do a PCT and stuff as long as I can, and so on and so forth. So one is affinity, which means that the levels that we do have we our body works quite well with and it works quite well with because our nutrition is more or less on point steve's way more organic than you mind than i am steve fast which is a great way to boost your uh, growth hormone levels but equally could lower temporarily your testosterone levels and so on and so forth so there's multiple factors involved and yet at the same time we are older than the typical demographic for our listeners we're not young with low TRT levels. Why is that? Well, part of that's because we've been hitting the gym more or less consistently, Steve. I think I speak for both of us in this particular regards. Myself, it's for 43 years as we record this podcast. Steve's going to be 20 plus years training, 100%. So there's an argument to be made 
in terms of the simple fact that we've been consistently going to the gym and been consistently re reasonably good with our nutrition for a long time, that we kind of have a handle on how we train, how we eat, how we rest, and so on and so forth. I think both Steve and I are, are quite good at getting sufficient rest to recover from the gym. I'm self-aware enough to see when I've got things that need to be sorted out in terms of flexibility, stiffness, soreness from recovery, and so on and so forth. And that comes from making those mistakes when I was younger. And, of course, we put out good information to support these things for you on the other podcasts we do. So at the end of the day, we haven't had to blast and cruise. We haven't so far touched wood, and I'm 59 as we record this podcast, to go on CRT. And yet we maintain. I, I, my, my best bench press was a few weeks ago. So my lifetime PB was literally, I'm going to say, five or six weeks ago, Steve. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, and, and at the age of 59 years of age and not on TRT. I was on a cycle at that particular point, but not on TRT. So there's that. There's also, and I think it's something else that can be kind of an issue. And I go back to the social media thing, but it was also an issue before social media blew up like it has done. And that is the now mindset. I, I am no different from the younger listener in that when I was, as I am, old enough to read the bodybuilding magazines back in the day with Arnold and then later on, people like Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, et cetera, on the covers, I would have wanted to look like those physiques. I would have wanted the strength of this person. I would have wanted the bicep of that person, and so on and so forth. But I never had the now mindset beyond, and I've used this analogy on other podcasts, the fairy godmother waving her magic wand. If that was possible, maybe. But otherwise, I never had the, I need to have 20-inch biceps right now. I need to have a 60-inch chest right now. I think there's a problem, Steve, and it's social media and media in general of the now generation. It's the reason why, for example, a lot of people get into debt buying the car or the house or having other things that they can barely afford, if at all, and then they buy them anyway because they want them right now. And you can't do that with your body. You can't. Now, this, as Steve said, it's literally the only one you've got. And you cannot sort of... You can't force it chemically to take you from 145 pounds to 300 pounds now, today, tomorrow, at the end of the week, Steve, it can't be done. And there's a, a, a thing there that may be that quote unquote now generation, I want it yesterday, I want it as soon as possible, that might be getting people thinking they need to go on TRT. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. And here's the thing, guys, genuine, proper, actual doctor prescribed TRT is not really best suited for putting on pounds of muscle. The 100, 150 milligrams a week that you might get prescribed, I think we seek to be between 80 and 200, the average is around 100, 120, is just to keep you as you're supposed to be right now, as a normal average Joe with normal average testosterone levels. It's not going to turn you into the next freak that's going to get the Olympia stage. The problem, it may, becomes worse, Steve, when what we might call self-prescribed TRT, your gym TRT, or worse, sports TRT, tends to be the, the highest possible prescribed level, i.e. 300 milligrams, and typically in the case of sports TRT, 400 milligrams. And again, as Steve said, even that, especially above the medically prescribed level, comes with issues because you are on essentially pretty much forever, with the odd rare exception, obviously. Don't choose outliers to evidence your argument guys because if one or two in a hundred can come off of 400 milligrams and recover the rest of you cannot and it's one of those long-term things where you will struggle way more than necessary and that's without getting into how how you'll feel coming off of trc and again the medical stuff the reason why we recommend blood tests and so on and so forth they literally staying on testosterone for the long period of time especially the self-prescribed form, is not going to be administered, medicated, blood-checked, seeing if there are any other issues that are occurring, and so on and so forth. And that's without getting into the other extremes, and I say extremes because I've been there myself, and I think Steve has, when we train. That's when we diet for competition to get cut and so on and so forth, but especially competition dieting, when we have those kind of diets, when we train, and this is where I put myself in the frame, Steve, when we train to the oomph degree to win a competition and we're doing that well at the same time because most of those things are quite temporary at the same time as pushing our body chemically and of course the other parts of the lifestyle well, Steve and I talk about these on these shows all the time 
would be other elements, for example, fat burning products like DNP and whatever else. But there's extremes of lifestyles. It becomes an issue there. So I think number one, guys, and this is something I think you should all start to look at, is you have to identify one, is there other elements of your lifestyle that can be fixed? And two, why, if those elements have been fixed, you think you need to be on TRT? That is a question that you need to ask yourself. It's all, and it's well and good, Steve, because we like to do the more responsible uh, way that we talk on this podcast and on the forum in terms of not being the kind of guys that would encourage you to go on cycle, not being the kind of guys that would encourage you to go on TRT. And quite simply, as Steve said at the beginning, to stay off TRTs as long as you possibly can. I absolutely have it in my mind, because I've discussed this on the forums and with Steve and in his podcast, that I'll stack, stock up, as I put it, on test sip and try to as much as possibly can and maintain a certain level in there and say to myself, there will come a time, I think, that if I want to continue to train for as long as possible into my 60s, maybe my 70s and even my 80s, because there are individuals out there that I'm aware of that have been able to do this, that I might want to maintain a certain level of strength and a certain level of muscle and a certain healthier lifestyle above and beyond everything else. And my investment of time off will aid me with my investment of time on TRT. The longer I'm off, the bigger the gaps between my cycles, the better my body will accommodate it versus me going on TRT sooner than I need to, even right now, and then staying on and having arguably to deal with possible medical issues that and quality of life issues that I didn't allow for and I should have allowed for by going on before I absolutely needed to. My quality of life should, if I'm 60, 70, 80 years of age, and using a very low dose of TRT, be better than the average Joe who does the same things as I do, hits a gym, but doesn't use TRT, is my age, doesn't have my lifestyle, whose nutrition is poor, and so on and so forth. My quality of life should be better. It won't be perfect, because I still want my doctor to keep an eye on certain particular things, and have to explain to him why a 70 or 80 year old is using testosterone, but at the same time, I should be able to sit there reasonably muscular, reasonably strong, and definitely in comparison to the average Joe in the street who's my age and not hitting the gym, who doesn't have good nutrition uh, and isn't using TRT, I should compare better in that particular regard. There's always going to be risk factor, guys, and you need to allow for that. Literally, as I said earlier, you have one body. And arguably, and I'm going to sound like a certain singer, one opportunity to do what you're supposed to be doing. And that is the lifestyle that we're talking about. So what do you think on that, Steve? Is it the now yeah. thing? Okay, so I'm going to have to knock you off your boomer pedestal on this one, Mobster. So check this out. I look, So I looked up the statistics. 89% of adults 65 and older are on prescription medication in the United States. 89%. That means 9 out of every 10. So pretty much everybody. Not only that, but over 50% take five or more non-prescription and or prescription drugs a week. And 12% take 10 or more. These are over 65. This is your generation. Oh, yeah. My point is, it's not just younger people who are on every drug under the sun now. It's everybody. But here's the thing. And this is something that you got to remember as a parent, if you're listening to this. What you do influences your child. So if you're on, on all these fucking drugs, then your kids are going to be on every other drug. So I'll give you an example. Instead of, you know, taking care of our heart health, because the heart is a muscle, what are people doing who are your generation, mobster? They're going on blood pressure medication. They're going on cholesterol medication. Yeah. They're not, they're, they're smoke, they're self-medicating with alcohol and cigarettes and vaping and all this other stuff, right? They're self-medicating with social media. There's boomers on Facebook who go on there every fucking day and waste hours out of their day. On social media, that's an addiction. They're self-medicating. They're they're self-medicating their mind, um, watching the cable news and being poisoned. Um, they whenever there is a storm, like a hurricane or a tornado, they're watching the news and poisoning their minds, getting scared to death about it. You know, um, you know, being scared in their house. Oh my God, the hurricane's gonna come get me. You know, it's it's the self-medication. So. It's not the younger people. But what happens is the younger people, they're learning from the older generation. They're learning from your generation and they're picking it up. So what I strive to do in my life 
is not be dependent on a drug. Instead yes. of going on blood pressure medication, instead of going on cholesterol medication, I just take care of my heart. So that's what let you me, want to end up doing. Let me jump back in for a second, yeah, Steve. Go I'm mm -hmm. actually going to I'm going to agree with you because here's the and maybe the reason I did my little speech before is because I don't have those habits. But I'm going to agree with you. If you take the average person in the high street here in the UK, never mind America, like Steve said, I bet the statistics are exactly the same, Steve. My mum, my, my mother. Uh, my ma, as some of you might say, is 100% on medication. I think she takes up three or four prescription medications. She was over overdoing one. She's had habits with alcohol when my dad passed away that we had to uh, have words about. That that was uh, out of order. There was a bunch of so that uh, alcohol's a drug, absolutely. And she's 20 years older than me, so she'll be 79. You know, so absolutely she's on medication. And I would argue that 90% of the UK citizens, senior citizens, as we like to call them are all, almost certainly 90% of your medication. Now, there are, is a small group, which is where, and I think I'd like to consider myself, and certainly you when you get to my age, Steve, in that particular group. And, and it's thus, right? The, the guys that we see riding their bikes up a mountain with their grey and silver hair on a Sunday morning, the joggers with grey and silver hair that are out there, people like Steve and I, and hopefully the more elderly listeners, and Steve's not my age yet, but, we'll, you know, a few more years, that are consistently going to hit the gym and train hard and have half an eye on our nutrition at all times. Steve was fast just last week. So, you know, and, and, and Steve's the wrong side, I believe, for 40 years of age. So this is a situation where the younger listener doesn't get it. You need to have these habits for a lifetime. And the longer you can avoid taking drugs over, over the counter, prescribed, doctor prescribed, or even TRT, the better the better you use those and manipulate that lifestyle in the gym and hit it hard and be consistent the better you will be make sure when you come on the forums guys and you're talking about trt levels especially at a younger age that we know all the parameters if you're overweight fix it if you're in a polluted area get filters in the house eat better food and be consistent in your lifestyle we want to know what you think on the subject are there any issues that we haven't discussed that's going to affect a young person's CRT? Is there a reason you think younger people are on CRT more now than perhaps before? We want to hear what you think. Please note, we are not doctors and the opinions are ours. It is our view and based on our experience and views on the topic, our podcast offer informational purposes and entertainment only, the freedom of speech and the First Amendment applies.